uh, the, the state of the property market at the moment. Just how are you reading uh, what's going on out there at the moment? Well, yeah, we, as you say, we had a 50% uh, increase year on year on our settlements for the last uh, half of uh, 2015 relative to the last half of 2014, which is sort of a, a, is a massive increase. Um, we, what we're seeing is that uh, we, are not get, we are not getting a reduction in lead, um, we're not getting a reduction in inquiry, we're not getting a reduction in walk-ins, we're not getting a um, reduction in any number across the board in any of our 1,000 or 1,100 outlets across Australia. Mm -hmm. Um, and right, even up to this point now, so we're going to even have a better January than we had this time last year. Um, in terms of loan amounts, we've got a slight reduction in the amount of loan amounts. What we are seeing though is more owner occupiers are borrowing from us than our, than our investors. Interestingly enough, though, Paul, is that what's happening with these, the the APRA rules around uh, lenders being restricted as to the amount of investment money that they can lend, as, that is, they can't grow a greater than 10% per annum, um, is that. It's a, it's a volatile market in that one, one quarter, one group will be above the 10%, so they pull back on their investor lending, and then another group will be below the 10%, because it's, it's not a static number. It's moving around. So um, there are still plenty of lenders out there chasing the investment borrowers. And, uh, and so all that sort of noise about it's really hard to get finance here for, a, for a, a property investor. That's not the case. It's not the case. No, we're, all, we're always in a position to place it with somebody because there are a number of lenders in the marketplace. It's not just the big four banks, it's all the regional banks. And all the regional banks are usually underdone in terms of investment lending. Um, I mean, I, I guess someone like AMP is not because AMP, as we know, pulled out uh, late, uh, late last year, but they actually came back into the market, into mm -hmm. the investor market. So when, they go, when they're underdone, they come back in the market. When they're overdone, they go to the market, and then someone else steps into their shoes. You've just got to be the sort of lender like we are. You've just got to be the sort of uh, distribution business that we are that can actually find the lender who's, who has appetite for investor loans for investors who are trying to buy investment property. So sort of crystal balling, Mark, and we can move on to the sort of the property market. We've seen uh, a bit of cooling in Sydney and to a lesser extent in Melbourne. Um, what's your read on, uh, on the state of the property market at the moment? Uh, well, the state of the property market, as far as owner-occupiers is concerned, is very healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, like we still run, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, we run on this environment where it's supply, supply and demand. Demand is greater than supply, especially when all the jobs are in Sydney and Melbourne. So, you know, we're getting an influx of uh, natural growth or organic growth in, in, um, you know, through births in uh, both Sydney and Melbourne. We're also getting people migrating to these territories, chasing jobs. They've all got to live somewhere. They're either going to lease or they're going to own. So we see the owner-occupier market in, a, in Sydney to continue to grow. Definitely not the rate it was growing at 12 months ago, but at a good, sustainable, steady rate. Um, uh, in terms of investor market, probably a little overdone in certain sectors, segments in Sydney and Melbourne, um, and in Brent for that matter as well. And, Def and, definitely haven't done Perth. And sort of in Perth, there's obviously uh, it's been doing it pretty tough over there with the resources uh, boom coming off. I mean, is, is, it, is it a market to be concerned about the Perth market at the moment? Um, well, in a relative sense, in terms of Australian national, and in terms of Australian averages, no, because it's too small a percentage across the board. So, but if you're in Perth, uh, it, it is an issue. So the Perth market has come off bigger than everybody else, mainly because uh, Perth's a very expensive place to live. Um, you're not, you're, they're not earning as much money as they were earning a, a year ago or six months ago. There's not, there's not as uh, there's a high uh, unemployment level over in Perth than there was than there has been for the last five years, right at the moment. So Perth is suffering a bit, doing a bit tough, and prices of everything, cost of living generally in Perth, is higher. But the east coast of Australia, you're still pretty optimistic about uh, how that market is positioned at the moment? Right now, strong. I'm ha happy. We've still got very low interest rates in this marketplace, notwithstanding that the investor loans have gone up around 50 basis points over the last six months, um, you know, even though irrespective of the RBA hasn't moved rates. So um, I I'm still fairly confident. If, if we, look, the thing that could, could cause a problem here, Paul, is if, if for some reason um, the banking industry is forced to put up their rates mm. against the RBA, and let's say they put them up in February, and let's say they put them up against the owner occupiers. I think that's the thing that'll have some effect on the, uh, um, you know, the sustainability of the house price rises in Sydney, both at the owner occupier level and at the investor level. Well, again, crystal balling, uh, Mark. I mean, uh, interest rates. There's been a little bit of talk, uh, particularly since some of the volatility in the share market, about potential for a, another cut in interest rates. What's your take on that? Well, I mean, if you look at the IMF numbers that came out last night and the China, the China growth numbers, which you guys have been talking about for, for 20 last yep. 24 hours, um, I'd say the Reserve Bank is probably going to sit back and watch for our ABS numbers. We get a, we get a, a print, I think, around 28th or something, I don't know, sometime later this month on uh, CPI, etc. Um, I think they're going to wait for all that information. My gut feel is that they won't do anything in February. They'll wait to March and see what the, the global impacts are. 
to us. We're, I, I think we're already feeling the global impacts, you know, the slowdown in China. We're already feeling that. We're already feeling what's been going on the resources for the last 12 months. Um, as long as unemployment doesn't get out of control, in other words, creep above a sort of a crazy number, like six and a half, I think the RBA will keep the numbers where they are. They need the headroom. I don't think they can afford mm -hmm. to reduce the headroom that they've currently got just at the sake of one rate reduction, for example. I just don't think they would do it. I think they'd rather have that headroom in the event of some global disaster or global problem that they can't arrest. Because if they start reducing rates now, we're going to lose a headroom. We've got no headroom in fiscal policy because the government's not about to start borrowing in order to, uh, you know, to, to keep the, con the economy going. And if the RBA's got no headroom, we've got nowhere to go. So the, my gut feels they keep it hot where it is. And the $64 question that a lot of investors have is not time to fix? What's your view about sort of fixed rates versus uh, variable rates? Well, right now, um, I know our fixed rates started at 429, our mm -hmm. variable rates 392, which we're still holding right. on to that rate of 392. Um, so, a big figure so, of 3%. So, say again? A big figure of 3%. No, I'm 3.92 3 yeah. on my yeah. variable rate and 429 on my uh, fixed. Um, so, it's probably there's 30 odd basis points between the two. I'd like to see the, I mean, my decision making, if I was a, a homeowner, my decision making to go and take a fixed rate is when the variable rate starts to get very, very close to the fixed rate. That's not the occasion at the moment. That was the case about six months ago. Probably the time to fix it around about six months ago. So watch the rates as the variable rate uh, inches closer to, war, closer to the fixed rate. Let's say it was within 10 base points. That's usually a good wholesale indicator that you should start to look at fixing your rate. Okay, that's great advice. Look, moving on to uh, Yellow Brick Road, you're the executive chairman. It's a listed ASX company. Yep. I know there's probably this time of year not a lot you can say about uh, because we are coming into reporting season, but yep. people will be familiar with the, the home business, the home loan business. Um, what else is uh, Yellow Brick Road involved in? Well, I, I, and that we're, we're somehow everybody seems to want to pitch us against Mortgage Choice and uh, other sorts of entities similar to like AFG, which is just recently listed. We're a, we're a wealth business. We're not a home loan business, so we do all, all sorts of products. And so we do life, super anyone, life insurance advice, generally business advice. We run three accounting practices. We have a legal practice internally, as well as the mortgage business. The mortgage business is the biggest part of the business, but where those other product lines become extraordinarily important is when mortgage, the mortgage market or the mortgage, set, mortgage segment starts to flatten out and our branch owners, the people who, who, who work for us, actually can start to get revenue in the more defensive types mm -hmm. of products, which includes things like life insurance. When things flatten out, Australians tend to run towards getting life insurance. They get nervous and they go defensive. And you've got to have those product lines to sell. So Yellow Brick Road has a full suite of products, unlike the old wizard business, which is a monoline business, which I had many years ago. Uh, Yellow Big Road is a, is a one-stop shop. We have a whole variety of products which we sell out into the marketplace. Well, good luck with how Yellow Brick Road is going. I know you did a report in February. We look forward to seeing uh, your half-year results. Mark, Thank you. thanks for joining us on Switzer. Good on you, Paul. Thanks, mate. After the break, we'll see how Australia's largest listed investment company, AFIC, is approaching this tough market. If your car got hit by hail, that could be 100% disastrous. Or if your home got storm damage, that could be 100% devastating. So it's reassuring to know QBE Insurance is 100% committed to helping you. Call 133 QBE today. Pimple zits, blemishes, always ruining your complexion. And you can spend a lot of time and money looking for an answer. Spent a small fortune on a bunch of products and none of them helped. Here's a solution from Proactive to help you get clear and stay clear. It's our three-step system. Proactive just makes my life so much better. To have clear skin is a Order right now and get proactive for only $29.99 plus postage. And today, you'll receive an amazing deep cleansing wash free. Proactive really made such a difference. I don't need to cover up my skin anymore. And to make sure you keep clear, you'll automatically receive a new three-month supply of Proactive for only $29.99 per month and cancel any time. There's no hassle with Proactive. It's quick, it's easy, and it obviously works. Sold separately, you would pay over $198. But get all this for only $29.99. Call now. 
Pimple zits blemishes, always ruining your complexion. And you can spend a lot of time and money looking for an answer. Spent a small fortune on a bunch of products and none of them helped. Here's a solution from Proactive to help you get clear and stay clear. It's our three-step system. Proactive just makes my life so much better. To have clear skin is a Order right now and get proactive for only $29.99 plus postage. And today, you'll receive an amazing deep cleansing wash free. Proactive really made such a difference. I don't need to cover up my skin anymore. And to make sure you keep...